I love you, MTV. I know your budget. You cannot make me do that right now in this chair. What movie makes you laugh hysterically every time you watch? Oh goodness, there's so many. Coming to America. I do Classic. love me some Coming to America. <laughs> Home Alone still to this day, like it gets me. I know that iron's gonna come, but I still laugh. Do you like Home Alone too? Lost in New York? I actually do, but not as much as I like Home Alone. Ooh. You like Home Alone too better? I do like it better. I just think it's so funny. I was watching Home Alone because we watch it every year. And you could never remake that movie right now because, well, first of all, your alarm's not plugged into the wall. It's on your phone. So, you know, you couldn't get through security without the key. The whole thing, it's, so, it's such a perfect, yeah. yeah. I mean, they tried to. Oh, did they? <laughs> they tried to make it. Maybe not as successful as the original Home Alone. I didn't even know they, sorry. Sorry, too overstated, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I aged out, guys, I aged out. <laughs> a movie that makes you cry. The Whale. The Whale, on every level. I thought I was prepared to go see it and I had two things of tissues in each pocket. And a lot of times, it's not that I'm like a hard ass, but I just, it takes a lot in a movie to get me to, it was just nonstop. And just when I thought I was a recovered, I would be like, it would come again. And then even afterwards, like I'd be just driving in my car the next day and just like start sobbing, thinking about something, both from the movie and just Brendan's portrayal. And it's also kind of lovely because he's having this, they're saying the renaissance. renaissance. And I love it because I feel like he's obviously done the classic like Encino Man, Jojo Jungle, and The Mummy, but he's also like Gods of Monsters. And I feel like he's got so much range. School Ties? Yes. Have you seen School Ties? Yeah. That is. That movie is so, when he's out there in the rain, I just, that's such a perfect performance. What's like a home comfort film for you? I, and Shannon Doherty gets so mad at me because I always, but I love Heathers. Heathers is classic. I love Sixteen Candles. That's one that I can never turn off when it's on. I like Heathers because it kind of set the groundwork for so many other teen movies that are really kind of sharp and yes. kind of biting. But Heathers was one of a, is one of a kind, like I just, I love that movie. <laughs> Is there a film or TV show that you watched and it made you obsessed with someone in it? Like in an unhealthy way? But I, I swear, <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. Who, who's, who's the shrine at home in the Kill household? Uh, goodness. Um, let's see. I mean, there's so many. I love Florence Pugh. I mean, I, I was watching when I saw Little Women and I thought, I always hate Amy March. Every movie, I'm like, oh God, it's such a hard, and I don't hate the actor that plays them. I just, it's such a, She's such a brat. But it was the first performance I've ever seen where I actually had sympathy for Amy March. Like, mm. it was kind of shocking. I, I always used to think I was a Joe, and then I watched this movie, and I was like, oh, I think I'm an Amy. Right, isn't that, because it was her performance that made that happen. Yeah. What film made you look at life differently? What movie made me look at life differently? Oh, oh. Michael Keaton in my life when he makes that video diary for his unborn child. And I saw it obviously long before I had kids, but it it just makes you really like remember to be in the moment and it's really sad. Is there any film that kind of you watch and inspired the way you wanted to act? Like roles or actresses or things that There's so them? many actors that I love. Annette Benning has been someone for and for a long time. Annette Benning can do anything. She's sexy, she's dangerous, she's the mom, she's the I, There's, I just, I love Annette Bening. A movie that made you fall in love? I, when I, cause I watched 16 Candles probably way too early. And so I thought when I was 16 that Jake Ryan was going to come and bring me a cake and kiss me over the birthday candles. That, that didn't happen. No. So I'm mad at love. For me. Do you look at some of those films though now? And I like, cause I remember like Molly Ringwell talking about, talking about the John Hughes stuff that she was in. And she's like, ooh. Yeah, they're kind of a bit problematic, like certain a things. A little bit, there's a little bit rapey in that movie. <laughs> yeah. No, it's definitely problematic. My daughter has not seen Sixteen <laughs> Candles. It is, you, the character of Long Duck Dawn is there, yeah, no, no, no. It's definitely, That's it for me only. What's a film that makes you feel nostalgic? <laughs> what's a uh, film that makes me feel nostalgic is anytime I see one of my older movies and I was like, <laughs> what happened to that girl? <laughs> what, is there one that you kind of, kind of like to rewatch? Catherine, the cruel intentions. Catherine, the, I, I, yes. No, I do love cruel intentions, but you know, so often like if I'm flipping the channels and it comes on, it's like, it just seems so self-indulgent to like stop and watch something about yourself. But I've gotten a little bit better because it brings back so many memories, so many good memories. And so I've, I've tried to, you know, stop for a little bit longer, but there's so many. I mean, even 
Working on Scream 2 was such a dream come true. You know, I loved the first one. Wes Craven was such a hero of mine. He was better than you could imagine, kinder, better director. And then being in that cast with Nev and Courtney and just everybody, like it was crazy. They're, they're so, like, Cruel Intentions was just, I mean, people obviously are still in my life in a, you know, very strong way from that film. The Grudge, I was talking to, Jason Bear and Katie Strickland like two days ago before I was on the plane. And we were just talking about like, do you still realize like they sent us to Tokyo to make this movie and we've lived there and we had the greatest time. So I try to stop for a minute so that I can, that part can, yeah, exactly. but not so much like dissecting a performance or like myself. You, of course, like the most iconic, one of the most iconic strong female characters. Um, is there a strong female character that you love? Oh, I can actually talk about Michelle Young and Crouching Tiger, that was, next level, but Michelle Yeoh in anything is extremely next level. And to see her right now having this moment, it's like, duh, what took you so long? Yeah. That's what I want to say. And she balances, like, and again, sorry, I feel like everyone wants to talk to you about Buffy, but it was so formative for me, but also the type of character where it's balancing that someone who can be an action hero, but also have all the vulnerabilities that come with it, where. But that's what makes the best action heroes, that's why, even Bond, when why I think Daniel Craig was one of the best Bonds, because he humanized Bond. Bond had emotion, he didn't want to show it, but so you, you want that in those characters. That's what, you know, if you just, I come, I beat up, I, it just doesn't, it doesn't, you know, you're, it's cool, it makes really cool fight sequences, but you don't remember it five minutes after. It's the, the heroes like that, that have a purpose, that have a drive, that have hu hu humanity to them. What was the film that made you want to become an actor? Probably Annie. I think I was like probably four. <laughs> Love that movie. Wait, did you ever get to play Annie in like a stage production or anything? No, I was too little. When Annie was on Broadway, I remember I went to go see it. It was the first Broadway show I ever saw. I think it was three or four, but you had to be a certain age or height, I don't remember, and I, I didn't. I wasn't tall enough. I'll also never be a rocket. Has there been a film that you've watched that made you want to try something? I think about like um, Whip It. <laughs> it made me want to do Roller Derby, the film that you. <laughs> That's right. I was like, where is this going? <laughs> oh, I remember the movie now. Thank you. <laughs> it's always fight sequences. I was like, I wonder if I could do that. I wonder if I could, you know, not jump out of an airplane, though. That one I don't want to do. <laughs> Sometimes I see these like fight sequences. I was like, I'm going to try that. Yeah, no, I don't want to jump out of an airplane. I feel like there's too many ways for me to die. I don't want to give the like, extra. I also like <laughs> flying already makes me nervous enough. It's the whole free fall thing. If you could just parachute out of a plane, Right. Like if the parachute is open and then like you jump out and then maybe, but not. Can't, I mean, they can do wonders with VFX now. I could visual effect myself jumping out of an airplane sitting in this chair right now. Well, I could. Somebody I'll, who's much better with computers could. I'm gonna get MTV to do exactly that. I love you, MTV. <laughs> I know your budget. You cannot make me do that right now in this chair. Don't forget um, that. You mentioned some of the fight sequences. I'd love to know if there are a few ones that stick out in your mind. I mean, every Bond movie. I just think they're so amazing. Wait, are you the next Bond? Yes. <laughs> Guys, you heard it here. I am the next Bond. I love it. I support this casting. Thank you. I so support much. this casting too. <laughs> the campaign starts here. Sam Michelle Gellar, thank you so much. Thank you.